Welcome to Colasec for August 2020. Um, this is going to be a bit different. We have transitioned our uh, recording and presenting duties over to David from Corey. So uh, a little bit of preparation for the absence of Mr. Grant. He has an impending arrival at his house that may make his presence a bit problematic. I apologize. I am the speaking fountain today. Um, I do not have a webcam on my shiny new computer, um, and it's strangely difficult to order webcams these days. Um, wait, wait, so you got 128 gig of RAM, but you didn't get a webcam? <laughs> that is correct. Yes. <laughs> One, you can order on Amazon. The other, you cannot. <laughs> uh, that pandemic life. That pandemic life, though. Um... So, I am the disembodied voice of your host, Adam Twitty. The others you can see around the screen waving to you and being very quiet. Oh, I better uh, plug this in or all bets are off. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a critical power failure at Jeff's house. Two minutes into this, two minutes in, we're, we're already <laughs> shutting down. I Well, I'm out of beer and Jeff is out of power. Tim is uh. still on a work call. No, we're good. We're good now. Not a good start. All right, okay. good. Whew. So I guess this is all the ways that you already know how to get in touch with us that we continue yeah. to put up here. I really don't know how the hell you would find your way into this meeting without knowing all of these communication channels already. But hey, if you weren't aware that these were available. <laughs> here they are. <laughs> David, you're up. Yes, um, the code this month, if you want to submit a CPE, is create a code, exclamation <laughs> point. Um, we had actually a very successful um, member of Colasec submit, a, I think, five CPEs. Um, over the last, I think, three years, he, had, he went back through the YouTube videos uh, and uh, uh, event uh, registrations through email. That he confirmed he was, you know, found himself um, having, uh, he could hurt himself in the background uh, in, in YouTube and things like that to, to give himself confirmation and also, I guess, GIAC confirmation that he attended that meeting and, and listened to that presentation. So he submitted those forms um, after we had signed everything, done everything for him uh, based on what he submitted to us through our uh, CPE website, webpage. And uh, I think within, within like 24, 36 hours, uh, GIAC responded and approved everything. So um, Sweet. very, very good process. It also was a great um, run through for me to uh, completely digitally uh, finish everything, um, which was excellent because um, we never we never really fully had a dry run. So if you want to uh, submit CPEs, um, Here's the information to do that. Uh, it does work. You can do up to 12 um, per renewal as far as uh, community participation. Uh, so if you go to every event we have and you take a SANS class every year uh, or a SANS cert every year, then you could potentially um, submit 12. I think it takes, what, 36 credits total um, per uh, certification every four years. but. Um, you can get at least a, a third of that done um, just by showing up to Colasec. So it's a level of trust and authority that no official organization <laughs> should ever have granted us. But hey, here we are. So I, I, I would say that Soda City Battlegrounds is having uh, its second momentous occasion tonight, and that's hosting our own CTF. Um, we have two components here. Um, if you have not gotten the information registered, uh, you'll want to go to uh, colasec.org and go look at our blog, and it has a link to join the fray. And uh, Adam will get you hooked up with credentials to get logged into the VPN and get you credentials to log in uh, through an RDP session to a Kali Linux box. Um, we have Juice Shop which is a OWASP uh, uh, web application that is purposely 
uh, made insecure and uh, we'll have some opportunity to play around with that. And when you find flags and get them, you can go to the CTFD uh, application. It's listed here on this page and uh, you can register an account and then uh, join or create a team. And then if you go to the challenges page, uh, you can uh, submit those answers for uh, challenges that you get. And uh, we are gonna have some uh, walkthrough on this and that's going to be our speaker tonight who we're uh, happy to have. Uh, Carlos is with us. He, um, well, he's from Waka, Mexico and living in Nashville for about 17 years now. And he works at uh, Premise Help with Tim, uh, who I think is on an admin call trying to get something fixed currently. Um, and he's gotten into some CTF and I'm sure he'll tell everybody a little bit about himself once he gets on here. But uh, I think we are thankful to have our continued sponsor, which is uh, the USC Columbia Technology Incubator, who we haven't seen in six months. <sighs> Provided they don't implode before the <laughs> pandemic ends. <laughs> well, I, I did go look out on there. They have events listed on their calendar in, that are taking place in the facility. So I sus suspect um, we might be able to go back there at some point if we so chose. But that is a uh, that is for another day to discuss. Indeed. All right. So, do we want to take a quick intermission so people can refill drinks, or do we just want to go ahead and jump into it and see if we can get Carlos? I say we go ahead and let Carlos get started uh, if he's ready. Okay. Hey guys. So thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Carlos, and uh, I'll be doing uh, some walkthroughs and just some some tutorials. If you guys are new to CTFs, uh, I'll walk through uh, my thought process when it comes to how do I approach them and uh, how do I go about just, you know, in general, thinking about an application and testing for it to see if there's several things broken with it. Uh, we'll go through all the inputs and just some basic re reconnaissance uh, on the web application itself. Uh, right now, I, I was trying to log in with the username and uh, password that I have, but it's not letting me in. Uh, it's, uh, would you guys mind sending me another uh, account real quick? Uh, yeah, Anthony, can you shoot me an email real quick? And I will shoot you some credentials. All right. Uh, but, yeah, so, I mean, I can uh, – do you guys uh, – should I share my screen? Yeah. All right, cool. Let me see. David, that'll be good, right? Just share it straight in the meet. Yeah, if he shares the his screen, it'll take over the meet um, okay. window that I'm showing. Hey, I'm sorry. What email address you want me to send that to? <clears throat> Should be columbiainfosec at gmail dot com. Yeah. Send it there. All oh, right, thank you. I don't, <laughs> don't want to have to switch email addresses. Sorry. See. You see? Are you uh, in the chat? I should be seeing my screen now. Yep. Yes. Cool. Let me see. Let me just hit some windows up. And and I can go ahead and just kind of start because I actually have uh, an instance of Juice Shop. Um, so I can just kind of walk through some of the basic stuff right now while I get while we get the account set up. Oh. So let me. Uh... Actually, it should be the same. So if you just want to present what you have. And people yeah, can work yeah, on right. it. Yeah, that, that that's what I was that, that's what I was thinking as well. So I can just I can just present with what I have, and it'll it'll be the same for you guys. Uh, mine is just a hosted uh, on Heroku, I think. Let me just. Oh, there it goes. And uh, so, I, I really I really like. Um, the juice shop because it's really it's really easy to set up and uh it's it's really cool that the guys that um that created it are actually part of the OWASP project and uh and they put a lot of effort into it and uh it's it's really cool because the whole framework you can run it you know like you guys are doing it uh on a ctf or you can run it by yourself they have a one-click uh installation 
with Heroku. So if you actually go to the GitHub repository where um, the Juice Shop is at, uh, and you have a Heroku uh, account, you can actually deploy it with just one click, and you'll have your own instance of it. Uh, if anybody wants to keep on going uh, after the CTF is done, uh, I think I should be able to do it now. So let me see. Carlos, isn't there also a? Um, isn't it deployed in a uh, like a, a VM uh, that they've set up? Like yeah, I'm pretty that? sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they, they they have a they have something like that too. Uh, they 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 make it really they make it really easy to just uh, to run it. So let me see. Ah, it keeps sending me there. Oh, there it goes. Cool. So this is my instance, pretty much, that I have set up already. And as you guys can see, the OWASP, uh, the juice juice shop, is set up as just a normal website so it's got a bunch of different uh it's got it's got a lot of different components to it uh so right here we can see that there's a login page uh, and uh at the same time if you guys are following along here with uh with cali i do recommend using uh burp suite uh, which is a proxy uh so we'll set it up right now and uh, i'll show you guys how to set it up as well uh let me see so it's okay Let's see if it opens up. And uh, a proxy, pretty much what it does is it sits between the client, uh, in this case it's you, and um, and the server. Uh, so it's going to be able to it's going to be able to inspect all the traffic that's going through uh, through the browser. In this case, uh, Firefox uh, here, and it's going to allow us to see all that traffic. And it has a few different tabs right here that, that are pretty that are pretty cool when it comes uh, to just in general. Um, doing uh doing ctfs uh, mobile ctfs uh or where well web ctfs uh because it allows you to really take uh control of all those uh, http requests and uh, so a few a few things to note right here we'll be probably using uh the repeater the most uh, this allows you to uh grab a request and then modify it and then send it uh via burp uh so this is actually and this burp uh is a uh, community edition so it's actually free. You can go. Uh, you can go and install it. Uh, I think they have a website, uh, portswigger. Uh, net or dot org, and you can actually install it on whatever OS that you have. Uh, and it's a super. It's a super cool tool to use. Uh, we use it every day. Uh, and all right. So yeah. So we're gonna start here. Let's see. Let me set this up. So we'll go to preferences, and then. We'll set some proxy settings. So we're going to do port 8080, uh, which is what uh, Burp is going to listen to uh, by default. So this is going to send pretty much all the requests from your normal uh, browser uh, onto port 8080. And then that's going to allow you to uh, to proxy all those. All right, now let's go. Now we should be able to go burp. Let's see. Let's see. All right, for some reason, it's not wanting to uh, go through it. So let's just make sure this is still working. Insufficient chickens were sacrificed to the demo gods. Right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so this is actually uh, one of the uh, one of the first challenges. It's actually finding this uh, this scoreboard, but for some reason this is 
not cooperating. So let me see if I can do something better. Uh, let's see. Okay, let me pause uh, the stream and I'm going to try to do something else uh, so that it can be a little faster. Let's see. Uh, can you see? Can you guys uh, see the juice shop still? Yes. Yep. Okay. Cool. Uh, so I'm, I just have it running on on my regular uh, computer now, so I'm not inside the v, uh, the VM. The VM was probably slowing it down. Uh, all right. So we're gonna take a look at here at uh, all the small components, and we're just gonna do it directly from here. Uh, it'll probably work better, anyways. Uh, so the application is uh, some sort of, uh, they sell juices. Uh, so we can go here, we can click an image and we can uh, see a few uh, a few elements already. Uh, this is a pop-up uh, pop uh, box right here. And it has a, it has a comment. Uh, we can submit, can we submit a comment? We might have to be logged in. Oh, okay. So we can submit uh, anonymous comments if we're not logged in. And we can also, let's see, can we like? We can't we can't like uh, right now, so that would be interesting to see if maybe we can um, we can create uh, we can cheat the system and maybe like these unauthenticated. That would be pretty cool. Now that would be one of the things that I would look for. Uh, now uh, I also most of the time uh, this is this is Firefox. Uh, I will go here and I will. Uh, uh, can you guys see the Dev Tools or do you guys just see the uh, the Juice Shop? No, I think we're Let's just seeing the juice shop. Okay, let me see. Let me show you guys this real quick. This is one of the, the more important parts uh, of uh, just CTFs in general when it comes to web stuff. It's actually looking at uh, at the dev tools. Uh, the dev tools are pretty much a way for developers to come in here and check out whatever they're doing on the website. And so it's going to give you like all the HTML right here on this side. This is all the HTML that's being rendered by the browser. And it's also going to give you a console where you can run JavaScript. Uh, so I can do like just regular JavaScript stuff like one plus one. I can, you know, like assign a variable to like a string and uh, then call that variable. You know, it, it'll, it's going to allow you to do all that stuff. Uh, it's also going to give you a debugger uh, where you're going to have pretty much all the JavaScript content from this website. And it's going to allow you to just pretty much um, view all the JavaScript that's making this page run on the client side. Uh, so right here we see that we have a main.js. Uh, all this is uh, it, it's important is we're probably going to end up using, you know, like some of this JavaScript eventually uh, to figure out functionality and uh, what the website is actually doing with the JavaScript. Uh, there's a few other here that are probably just uh, being, uh, being created uh, by Angular since I think they do use Angular in this version at least. Uh, so we have all these uh, right here. And then another cool tab is the networking tab. And this is pre pretty much where I spend most of my time because you see all the networking requests that are triggered by this application. Uh, so right now, if I hit uh, if I hit refresh, it's going to create a bunch of requests. Uh, this is actually going out and uh, fetching all these files. Uh, so we see right here that, that we have the same JavaScript files that we saw earlier. We have some style CSS. Uh, you can check out the um, the actual response uh, is some CSS right there, and then we also see uh, some uh, something more interesting right here for us, 
uh, which is this JSON uh, object. Uh, JSON is a way uh, of uh, it's a way for web developers to interact with applications by sending data instead of sending like a big blob of just random data. You can actually model it uh, in a way that's more readable for applications, especially JavaScript. Uh, this is modeled after JavaScript objects, uh, so it's uh, JSON notation. Uh, and we see here that this is how it's actually loading all the information for the juices that we have in the store. Uh, so this is cool because it, it tells us that that we uh, that we actually have some sort of backend, you know, just processing all this information. This JSON is uh, the, the application is actually ingesting and outputting JSON. So that's pretty interesting uh, from an attacker standpoint. You know, that tells you there's some functionality that we might be able to exploit right there. Uh, and if you just keep going, you know, it gives you like, like I said, all the all the stuff. And it's actually here. It's actually something, something that caught my eye right now. It's uh, it's actually putting HTML directly into the application. Uh, so if you see right here, uh, this description actually includes uh, an anchor tag. So it's actually taking this description and just rendering it in the HTML, probably unsafe. Uh, unsafely, uh, so this is something that that we should probably look at. Maybe there might be some way for us to inject some, you know, dangerous characters there, and get something more interesting. Uh, but this is all part of, you know, like just kind of the reconnaissance in general. Like we go through here, and we see what is this website, um, what does this website have, and how can how can we abuse what they already give us. Uh, sometimes, you know, like depending on the on the challenge, uh, I like to look at headers as well. Uh, if we pull this uh, this request from over here, uh, let me see. So we can see the actual request and everything, all the headers. Uh, sometimes the headers are really important because they tell you about the application, what might be running the application. There's times where this server right here, instead of cowboy, uh, it would say you know .NET or ASP uh, or some other you know uh, uh, type of uh, identifying the server. And, and you know we will write that information down in, my, uh, in notes. And maybe later on we'll find the version number, and you know you find a CVE for it, and then you can use something like Metasploit to just exploit it. Uh, so all the information that, that they they give us is is really important. This is probably going to end up being pretty important too. The web sockets, uh, that's another way, or socket.io, that's another way of handling requests right there. Uh, so now let's go back to the main application and continue um, continue looking at that. So let me see. Let me change my window. Let me share it. All right, and you guys should now be looking at the juice shop again. Yes. Now, uh, you might have uh, like an updated version. I've had this one up here for a while, uh, so they might they probably updated a few things. But the basic the basics of it should still be the same. They should still translate. Uh, the point the point of all this is kind of just looking at an application and you know seeing what can we trigger uh, so let's start right here my favorite thing to start with is our search bars uh, a lot of the time search bars will output uh, the input that went into them so like if we search for let's say we search for hello uh, what does it do so the first thing that I notice is that this hello is being reflected uh, and that's already you know a pretty good sign that the application is doing something with your input and using that input in the actual application for some for something here if we uh if we look at the html source we might be able to actually tell what it's doing uh let's see we'll just go ahead and try it uh we can start with a simple html tag and this is just html i just want to see if i give this application html will it render it it's not supposed to and if it does it means that i can you know go a little further so let's see if I, we can actually inject something here and then we'll do a search and haha something happened all right this hello doesn't look the same if we take this out and we go back to just um to just doing hello we can see that the hello is actually quite smaller and is the regular size that a paragraph tag should look like but when we do this and we can actually get rid of the first hello something else happens. This hello is actually a little bigger. It might not look like much right now, but we can actually try to get past the, uh, we can actually try to inject something here now because this is actually rendering HTML. We can do a few things. 
the first thing that I do here is try to see what can I actually inject that's uh, beneficial to me uh, as an attacker. Uh, the first thing that somebody might think is let's try um, let's try reflected XSS, right? This input is being reflected to us, so can we actually inject a JavaScript here and can it execute in the window because it's not being sanitized? So a, a way of doing it is just calling script, right? So we you, you just start a script tag. This is letting the uh, the browser know, hey, uh, we're about to run some uh, some JavaScript here. Please execute it. This shouldn't happen, and it, we shouldn't allow we shouldn't be allow allowing the user, in this case me, uh, to run this. Right? Uh, this is dangerous. You should never allow anybody to run this for you. And we see right here that it actually failed. It's probably being blocked. Uh, and if I look at the console, let's call it again. And let's actually, I'm gonna share um, my other my debugging window so you guys can see what it actually looks. When I'm debugging this, Popping up right here now, but usually if you if you find a flag right here, uh, you'll actually get a pop up saying, "Hey, you found it." Uh, but this one's actually kind of cool because it shows uh, that even th that you know it would have been easy to just include a script and then it not work and you keep going. Uh, but it usually, you know, when you see behaviors like this, you want to try to keep on moving gradually uh, from you know like a small you know like HTML injection, like you know H1, which is just a header and saying, you know, something, you know, that, that doesn't look malicious. This is actually going to help you two ways. It's going to help you identify the behavior and it's going to help you bypass, you know, some, you know, fire, uh, some WAFs, some web application firewalls that are looking for malicious input just so that you can get, you know, like a proof of concept going. Uh, after you, you know, you see that you have some HTML rendering because of user input, that's a clear indication that you should try to go for XSS, uh, cross-site scripting, which is, you know, uh, a, a vulnerability that allows you to inject JavaScript or vScript, mostly JavaScript, into a running context uh, on the client side. So again, we use the image tag, which should usually be something non-malicious, and we give it a source that doesn't exist. Uh, so this server doesn't have... Uh, an image in its assets that is called X. And then we do an event handler, which is gonna happen when there's an error here. Uh, when the browser can't fetch this, uh, this image, it's gonna create an event that has an error handler. And then this is telling the browser, whenever there's an error here, I want you to run this code. And in this instance, we're being loud and saying, you know, alert one, like this, just because we want to, you know, have a proof of concept. But really, you know, what you could do at this moment is if somebody was logged in, at that moment you have JavaScript running on their context. If you send this, if I send this link to somebody and I say, hey, you know, check out this new juice that the juice shop dropped, 
and I have something here to steal cookies and they click that at that moment, their account belongs to me. Uh, all you have to do is click, you know, you don't have to look at the alert. Uh, we can actually, you know, do something a little different. We can say document that cookie and that's actually going to go and fetch us a cookie. Uh, so at this point, you know, we have cookies. We can literally just copy paste this. If this was an authenticated user, of course, we could copy paste this and change our request. Uh, and, you know, we, we've taken over that account. Uh, we can do whatever the user is doing. And, you know, it's because of the way the cookies work, right? Uh, cookies work as a way of web applications to maintain state. Uh, by default, HTTP doesn't maintain state. And that means that anything that you do is going to be a brand new request to that server on the back end. Uh, websites decided that that was not okay, that they needed a way to keep state. You know, people shop online all the time. You need to have, you need to make sure that, you know, you can go back to that website that you were shopping, you know, something for food or for clothes and have your, you know, your cart already ready for you. That's done usually through cookies. Uh, cookies are what gives the web a way of knowing, you know, a way of having state. And so anytime that you can access a cookie that's being used for authentication, which is, you know, a lot of the times nowadays, uh, then, you know, you have, you know, a pretty good shot at taking over somebody's account. Uh, another thing, you know, like that you could do here is uh, I think some developers also save cookies on local storage. So if I do, I think something like this, I might not be right. Uh, yeah, so we have we get an object. If we drill down and somebody was hiding something in local storage, we could also get it. Uh, you know, at, like I said, at this point we're running JavaScript, and so we can run whatever we want under the context of this website. Um, so that was one vulnerability right there. Uh, there's a few more. So let me see if I can log in with this old account, and I cannot. So we'll do. We'll sign up. We'll do. Hello. It doesn't have to be a real email because uh, you're not really doing anything here. So don't be afraid to just use some random stuff. So now we're going to log in and we're going to start looking at stuff. Uh, a little more closely. This is more in the authenticated realm. Uh, so right now we're authenticated. We're probably a low use user at this point. Um, and you know, you want to see if you can do anything else pretty much with this user. Uh, if we go right here, we can see, uh, actually all the, all the challenges. And, uh, we see that we have a few access the administrative section of the store. Access a confidential document. Uh, we got perform a reflected XSS. So we can probably do this one uh, pretty easily. If we go speak, speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> if we can just, if we do this, there it goes. Uh, so uh, that it just wanted, so what it wanted, it didn't want us to use script. It wanted us to use a different HTT, HTML element. There's a bunch of HT, HTML elements that will allow you to run JavaScript. The iframe just happens to be one of them. Uh, the image, as you guys saw, is another one. Uh, you can run JavaScript pretty much on, on every uh, HTML element by using some sort some sort of event handler. Um, the web works, you know, uh, in mysterious ways, <laughs> and people wanted uh, people wanted users us to be able to interact with the web in a full way. So you can click on things, you can you know swipe on things, you can turn things on and off, and all those events can perform JavaScript for you. If you're able to inject HTML and you're able to use some of these elements, you're pretty guaranteed to be able to use XSS because you can inject JavaScript through HTML. So uh, so here we see that, you know, by injecting the, uh, an iframe, it's an empty iframe with a source of JavaScript uh, colon alert XSS, we can trigger uh, JavaScript and we can pop an alert uh, and we have solved that challenge. Uh, now it, just, it says uh, perform a dumb XSS with iframe um, XSS. So there it goes. Uh, now let's go look at the scoreboard again and see what else we can get in. 
there's 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 a few there's a few really cool ones that that people might not think that are security related, uh, but they can be turned into something. Uh, so for example, I know for a fact that this is uh, using some sort of API. So if we can break it, we usually yeah can actually get some exceptions. Now, so this is this is what's called uh, an exception in a stack trace, a stack trace, and it pretty much gives us you know some um, some information about what's running uh, in the background. Here, I already know that this is running Express. It's actually giving us um, the version number. So this is Express 4.16.4. It might be a little different uh, for you guys, uh, and it's telling us the error. It's a 500 error, uh, and that pretty much tells us that the server gave up. The server was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Here's all the information that I know about this request. Uh, these are really important to us as attackers uh, because they disclose a lot of stuff. They disclose, you know, what's happening. They disclose a few uh, file paths, and they disclose information that's valuable because if we Google this, uh, it might have some, you know, security vulnerabilities that we can abuse further. So it's just something else that you have to do, uh, you know, when you're testing applications in general, web applications, or look for error messages. Uh, this one doesn't have a lot of, you know, cool stuff in it, but I've seen when you know, some SQL statement went wrong and it just displayed the rest of the query plus, you know, like some uh, database password. Uh, it, it happens, it used to happen all the time. Nowadays, you know, there's ways to suppress all these errors and just give, you know, like a 500 error with nothing on it. That's usually what we tell people to do and how we tell people to treat errors. You know, don't disclose all this information, just spit out a normal error and just go on with your day. Uh, so let's see. Let's keep going through um, through some of these um, through the scoreboard, and let's see what else we can solve. And if anybody has uh, has a question on on really anything, uh, you guys just let me know. Um, this is uh, there is uh, a sheet with all the answers on this. If you just uh, Google Juice Shop answers. You can get uh, you can get a PDF from the guy that created you shop and uh, go through all the answers yourself. Uh, it's super useful because you know like there there are some that I haven't even tried like this diabolic challenges. I haven't even looked at them. <laughs> uh, I, I probably don't <laughs> want to. Oh come on! Uh, <laughs> I, I already I already lose a lot of time doing challenges, uh, so I haven't <laughs> I haven't tried these. Uh, but yeah, and and it's super cool because like I said, you know like right here. Uh, so this one, this was one that I was that I was kind of uh, that I kind of touched on earlier, is uh, the feedbacks, the 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 reviews. I give in a zero star review. Uh, so it's you know it, it's kind of it, it doesn't look like you'd be too malicious, but if you think about it, if you could give somebody you know a bunch of negative star reviews, and that would just you know devastate their business. Uh, you know that's what that would do. <laughs> uh, it's it's a way of showing that that sometimes you know like developers uh, don't. Um, don't put restrictions on the front end because uh, or, or don't put restrictions on the back end because they trust the data that's coming in from the front end. Uh, if you set up a filter here on the front end saying only accept numbers and don't accept weird strings, but you're not filtering that data in the back end, I can go you know through several ways and send the data as I want it to anyways. You know, you I, I don't have to send data through the browser, right? The, at the end of the day, the server on the back is just accepting an HTTP connection. It doesn't have to come from a browser. You can send an HTTP request using curl. You can send it using, you know, Ruby. You can use it. You, you can you can do it using directly C and you know the libraries that it has. And so you know, like you should never trust you know anything that comes here. So right here, you know, we can we can obviously you know give a review. We can like it. And we can submit this. And now let's try to do some XSS stuff here too. We see that there's user input. Uh, we can submit as many as we want. And that's a laugh in Spanish. Ha ha ha. So let me see. So let's start again. Let's start with our with our H1, right? Uh, let's see if we can if we can just inject um, HTML. I'll call that a win. Uh, let's see happens uh this one's actually not letting us uh it's uh, actually uh filtering the um the closing tags and the opening tags correctly 
Uh, so here I just want to make sure that, you know, that I'm making sure that I test a few other things like this back, backslash right here and this uh, this closing tag. Uh, it might do something, it might not. Uh, and it's not doing a lot right here. Uh, so usually I, I would inspect it and just to make sure that I can't do anything and it's not really allowing me. Um, but let me see. Okay, so let's go and let's actually look at this. This doesn't have any reviews. We can add stuff to a cart. Then, oh, there it goes, your basket. We can see that there's some functionality there. We can increase some really expensive juice. We can send a gift. And if you see, these actually lead to like some actual Facebook uh, and Twitter accounts. And there might be some challenges there as well. Uh, like I said, I haven't done all of them, uh, but th this will be cool if, you know, you probably go in there and find something or you can, you know, do something right there with some fake one. It says invalid. We can do... Yeah, we'll we probably have to play with it. Um, but let's see, and this is to change languages. So that, that would probably be cool to see if we can actually do something there as well. We're going through there about us. And this is cool. Okay, so uh, if you guys don't see, uh, let's click on this. Uh, this is actually leading us to uh, a markdown file that has a debug flag of true. You can see right here in this uh, left lower hand corner. So let's actually go here. And this actually is gonna download a file. Okay, so it just downloads that file. Well, let's see, we, there's a... Once you click on that, we don't see what it was doing. Oh, okay, so if I, if you, if I copy this link right here, copy location, and uh, do you guys see my address bar? Yes. Okay, so that's that link that, that it contained. Uh, that this this is a link right here and this is the link that the the anchor tag right here uh so if you click on this it's gonna download that that md uh that file right there but let's actually go into this ftp directory uh because it looks pretty fun and you can see that there's actually some some stuff here and this is actually really cool because we discovered this using their own application uh so let's go into this quarantine folder and you can see that there's some files there uh you can go to this acquisitions and okay so so you can download all these little files and they probably contain some stuff and this is a suspicious error only md and pdf files are allowed uh so that's so that's another thing that we can look for and then there's a bunch of other stuff right here. And I think if you if you hit, if you hit this directory, this does this is a flag, um, because uh, this is this was supposed to be a private directory. And let me see. So th this was uh, what was that flag that that we used earlier? Let me see. Paste md debug equals true. Can we use that here? MD debug equals true. MD. Oh, so this is interesting. This is uh, this is trying to to look for a file uh that that's a MD file, and then uh. And then it's not finding it, but it's actually giving us this error saying that it didn't find it. Uh, so this is interesting. You can probably, I think, I think this is probably local file inclusion. And what that means is that you, we can probably craft the payload here uh, to extract the file from the server. Uh, we probably have to play with uh, with this MD debug and see what kind of rules he has. And sometimes um, you can add, you know, like something like a null uh, character right there. 
Um, and we see that we get a different error here. We, we actually got a bad request error uh, because of that null character. Uh, but sometimes, you know, that, that can work uh, to break the, um, the actual request that you're trying to inject with what they're expecting. Uh, I've seen this a lot with, you know, PHP and, um, and, and other types of extensions where you can just add a null and then, you know, trick the server into actually accepting your request, giving you the file, and, you know, you go on, you know, with all your stolen information. Uh, but yeah, so, so this is another place uh, where I think, you know, if you guys are interested, you could spend, you know, quite some time here looking at all these files uh, and actually, you know, finding something. And uh, there's a few other things. There's a, there's a Slack channel here. I, I haven't played with these, uh, but it's probably, those are probably fun as well. So now let's go look at the challenges again. And uh, does anybody have any questions? Uh, when you were looking at the FTP stuff, did you uh, have you ever done any attempts to do more file traversal to try and get? Uh, on the on the juice shop, I haven't actually, uh, but on other applications, I have. Um, here, you know, like I, I like I said, I just wanted to show it real quick, uh, and and, and uh, because of that debug flag, you probably can, you know, trick the um, uh, the server into just letting you download that file because that's what that was for. Uh, it's uh, any any markdown file that that it um, that it actually existed would uh, will be downloaded downloaded for you. So if you can trick that, you know, that debug flag into thinking that some of those JSON backups were uh, MD files, you will probably be able to download those files, and those look pretty good. So I would actually spend more time if the, if I was, you know, doing this competitively, I would spend more time there just because it, it looked pretty, it looked pretty juicy. No. Yeah, I was even wondering if you could get like an Etsy password file or something like that. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. The the Etsy password is good. Um, I usually go for, if I'm doing like something like this or, you know, another challenge, I usually also go for Etsy, uh, hosts, uh, because it's not, you don't have to be root to get it. And, you know, like it's none, like if there's a, there's a web application firewalls that, that are, you know, using just blacklists, they might not, they might have password blocked, but they probably don't have hosts, uh, blocked. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just little, you know, little things like that, like that XSS that we found here. You know the script tag was being uh, blacklisted, but we were able to you know bypass that by using an image tag and by using an iframe. Uh, a, a lot of times, you know, uh, this black blacklist just in general don't work. You know, people can always get around them. You know, like um, you know, you can use you know probably like percent encoding, and you know like get get past most of those as well. Uh, but yeah, uh, so let me see. So here, you know, we we pretty much already solved. Uh, you know, more, I think half of them, uh, the only ones that we're missing is this admin section. So acts as the administrator section of the store. Uh, we actually found those confidential documents and those were the, uh, the ones in the FTP section. I didn't get the pop-up saying that we saw them, but that, that was it. Um, we provoke an error that was not very gracefully handled. Uh, you guys saw that by sending just a, a random, um, a random request to a route that doesn't exist, the application is going to freak out and is going to, you know, disclose a bunch of information for us. Um, so this one, let us redirect you to a donation site that went out of business. Uh, that one, that one sounds, uh, that one sounds cool. So uh, I think I know where it is. So let's go to the about us. And let's see. So, no, I thought that was going to be there. Let's go to the contact, complain. Oh. Okay, so so this one this one's also this one also looks fun. Uh, I sidetrack right there, uh, but this one this one also looks fun. You can probably inject some messages there, and uh, if if you have some stuff right here, you know you can try some file upload vulnerabilities uh, to see if maybe you can trigger you know some XSS on the admin dashboard. That that's that's something that's really cool. Uh, this is called blind XSS. Uh, where you don't know where this form is going to end up, but if you submit a payload, uh, any fires uh, on, you know, like an administrative dashboard, you can, you know, again, steal cookies from that. Um, it's a pretty cool attack. I really want to see what that, um, what that redirect was supposed to do. It says that it leads to like a dead page. 
So I think we should be able to use it to redirect somebody to uh, a server that we control. So if you guys find it, you know, let me know because that one's probably that one's probably pretty cool. I don't see. Okay, so so this is interesting too. Uh, this is the user profile, um, and it's it's saying that it's gonna that we can use a Gravatar URL. Uh, if you have a Gravatar, uh, it's a service that allows you to use a picture, and then you can pull it, you know, from a bunch of different places. Uh, but this is interesting because it's making a request. Uh, so if it's making an arbitrary request, uh, we might be able to trigger, uh, you know, something a little more interesting, uh, like SSRF uh, server side request forgery. Or just make it, you know, make make a make a request to something that we control, so we can have more information. Uh, the first thing that I do that I would do here uh, will probably be sending a URL that I control, and for that I use something called webhooks. Um, so let me share another window so you guys can see it. Uh, just because uh, I really like this tool, and uh, I feel like. it again so yeah so so we can trigger it uh we don't we don't get any information right now uh but i'm pretty sure if we if we play around with it we can probably get something so let me see so let me go start png now i'm gonna try to you know tell the server to get a get an image that doesn't exist and that happened right here i told it to get x.png uh, but it doesn't exist. Um, so, but yeah, so that, that's another, that's another, uh, cool little tool that I like to use. Uh, let me share this now. And again, pretty much what I did is just, uh, if I see here, my history, I can set this link gravatar and it's going to make a request. Um, it would it, it would have been pretty cool for it to actually give us some information. Sometimes those requests are gonna leak uh, cookies uh, and authorization headers, and that's that's what that's how you know if if this would have done that we would have been able to get some headers and some cookies with that request. But unfortunately, it didn't work. Um, so we keep going here, and I think we can actually. Okay, so where's the reviews? So here, let me see if I can, I'll show you guys what this client side stuff looks like and we'll go through how to actually submit, for example, a, a zero star rating, right? Uh, so let me share this real quick.
So let's see. So this is pretty close. Hmm. So let's actually see what happens um, when we send a request with the rating, and then we'll grab that request and modify it. Uh, so there's uh, this challenge here that we have to solve. So let's see. So we see that some requests happen there. Now let's inspect those. And here we see something interesting. Um, there's an API uh, feedbacks routes, and that just tells us that you know this uh, this request went to this route. Uh, we can look at the uh, the cookies that were sent with it. So we have a continue code, we have a uh, cookie consent status, an IO language, and then we have this token. Uh, if you haven't seen a token like this, uh, this looks like JSON web tokens uh, because it's in base64 and it contains these little dots right here uh, as delimiters. Let me see if I can find it right here. So if you see right here, Right there, that period is a delimiter, and uh, base sixty. I mean, uh, JSON web tokens usually start with uh, E Y J. Uh, so if we grab this and we go to a decoder for JSON web tokens, we can probably actually see some data there, and that's actually well, let's actually go there so we can see. And again, this is this is pretty much my 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 horrible flow whenever I'm testing applications. <laughs> so. Uh, so don't mind me let me see all right so i'm back to sharing this right here so let's go here you guys should see this uh, json web token website is uh, jwt.io uh, we're gonna actually come here delete this and paste ours we don't care about that we actually have some information here we have the algorithm type, which is RS-256. This is, a, this is in fact, a JSON web token. Uh, and we have some information here. We have a status of success, and then we have this data block, uh, which uh, pretty much gives some more information uh, for, to, for it to get authenticated. Uh, we have a username. Uh, our username is not set yet, so that's blanked. Uh, our email, this is the email that I signed up with. This is actually probably a hashed version of my password, uh, which is really interesting. Uh, it says is admin is false. That's already a flag that we should probably turn this uh, true, right? Uh, why not? Uh, the last log uh, IP is 0 .0 .0. That's also pretty weird. This profile image default that SVG. Okay, so th that's probably where we could plug in something that we control and do something a little more uh, malicious. Uh, this created at it just says when that token got created and when it got updated. Uh, this is uh, an index, and this is the expire time uh, when this token specifically is going to expire. And then, uh, and this is signed. So I think if we if we change something, it's probably not going to work. Yeah. So there is a few things that you can do here that you know defeat our uh, some of the algorithms. Uh, sometimes you can actually come here and just say none. Uh, and in some versions of uh, the libraries that this uh, JSON web tokens use, this is going to be used and is going to ignore completely the algorithm. And you'll be able to pretty much just come here and change your ID, change your is admin value to true, submit that JSON web request, and the application is going to automatically authenticate you. I'm not sure if that's the case here. I think this is more, uh, this is a little more involved. You probably have to, you know, either bypass uh, the signature or, you know, just modify it to where it doesn't use uh, any algorithm. There's a few tools that you can use for this. Uh, I usually go uh, with one that's on GitHub. Uh, I'll, I'll drop it in the chat here in a bit. Uh, but yeah, so this is this is really cool. Um, JSON web tokens are, are used all the time nowadays, and uh, I've seen them in all kinds of places. Uh, so you know, like this challenge is actually pretty pretty uh, close to real world scenarios, uh, which is which is, which is honestly like always good to see that you know um, that all those applications are doing that. And oh, we got another little request here. That's weird. But yeah. So does anybody have uh, any questions or does anybody want to go after a specific flag? Anthony, so there's a question in chat there. Um, how could you, how did you tell that it was signed? Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, it was signed uh, because let me see, let me go forward or let me just Jason web token.io. 
Um, so when you try to decrypt, so this is this is actually what uh, this this is actually a good example. <coughs> you see this EYJ at the beginning again. That's that's how we recognize that this is actually a web token, and the periods. The periods are uh, a pretty pretty clear tell. Uh, after that, you know this this is actually uh, an algorithm is using HS two fifty six. It's probably use uh, and it's that. But if I change it, it's still gonna go through, right? Like this 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 is changing. Uh, if I put one that's signed, if I hit paste right here and delete this token because it's it's just garbage. This is if I click anything here, it's gonna just go red. Uh, and this this is pretty much telling me that that is signed. And uh, and another thing is right here. This one doesn't have anything. I mean, this is you know you can add something here, and then this will sign it. And then you can encode it again in base sixty four. Uh, but yeah, so so this is this is like the other one. You know, we couldn't modify it, and the website refused to modify it for us. So that's usually what I use as an indicator. Uh, again, like you can you can always use a tool to just modify this. All this is is just base sixty four encoded. Like this is nothing special. Uh, usually, like you know, if we remove, for example, this whole signature, you know, this this is still you know gonna fail and it's not gonna allow us to do anything. Uh, but yeah, so that that's that's how I knew it was signed. Uh, you know, you, you mess with it on that website, and the website automatically tells you, starts screaming at you. From from there, I would actually go and use a few tools uh, to try to actually modify those values you know forcefully and then you know submit those json web tokens and see how the server responds uh a lot of the servers you know are gonna are gonna you know automatically say no you know uh, this is unsigned but every now and then you know you find implementations of the json web token libraries that these applications use are outdated and back in the day you know when json web token was firstly available like pretty much all libraries um came out with you know the none uh, algorithm because it's uh it's, it's placed there by the specification the specification says that you need a none algorithm to test and debug some problems uh, but it, it doesn't mean that you have to you know send that uh, that non algorithm you know to production which a lot of libraries did and that's that's what caused you know the first few json web tokens uh, were broken that way now you know there's a few other ways that you can do uh, you can brute force you know the the json web token at the end of the day you know you only need one right like you just need one json web token that's being generated for you and then you can you know get that json web token and try to break it uh, on your own time on your own machine uh, all, all it's doing, you know, is it, it needs a key. And if you have, you know, like enough time, which, you know, nowadays uh, you can have, you know, like a, 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 a VPS or something running in the background and you can just load those, you know, JSON web tokens and then brute force them all day and then try to uh, try to break that password. And if you can, you know, like uh, on the receiving end, they're not even going to know what happened because, you know, the only two requests that they're receiving is one where you get a JSON web token. And then the second request that they're going to see maybe like days later is you accessing an account as an administrator if it allows it. Uh, so they're pretty, they're really good, you know, because, you know, obviously the, the data is nicely shaped with the, uh, in, in JSON for you and, and base 64. But if you don't implement them correctly, they can get broken pretty fast. And let me see, I think actually there's a pretty, let me see. So yeah, so that, that, that was uh, that was a SQLite uh, injection right there. So you successfully solve a challenge, login admin, login with the administrator account. Uh, so what we did there is, uh, is you know, like super basic uh, SQL injection where we actually pass down um, something else other than the email. So if you if you guys saw here, I didn't pass down an email. I passed I passed down a single quote. This or one equals one, and then dash dash, and then whatever password it probably doesn't care. And then we're gonna log in. Uh, at this point, uh, if we go here to uh, the uh, this right here, we're actually in the admin uh, account. Uh, so with that, you know, SQLi injection, we were able to bypass the uh, the the check of the the email, and then just access uh, the account 
automatically with the admin account. It's a little bit. Th this one honestly is a little bit unrealistic. You're you're not really gonna find you know like like a uh, you know SQLI injections like this anymore. Uh, this is you know your classic one or one, and then you comment it out. So what this does is whatever part of the query right here was at, it it finishes it. And then it cre it starts its own. So it pretty much says validate whatever was on this side of the equation, and then compare it to this. So it's gonna grab, you know, it's gonna say login with email, and then it's gonna finish it, and then it's gonna say or one is equal to one, and then it's gonna comment anything that comes after that. So this is pretty much just gonna say, you know, it's gonna say everything is true. Uh, lo just log me in. Everything is true. I don't care about the password. Just log me in, and you know by default, usually the the main account that you have in a database is your admin account. Uh, so that's what this is gonna just go ahead and do. You know, the server doesn't care, and the database doesn't either. Uh, it's it's just you know, it's just you're just finishing a statement, starting a new one that's gonna evaluate to true, and then you're gonna get logged in. And let's go to the scoreboard and see where we are at. And again, let me know if you guys have any questions or if you guys, you know, uh, just want to do like a specific flag. Um, and we probably solve some that, that are here, like in these, uh, without knowing, because, yeah, there's no, there's no SQLite here. Apparently, there's an admin section. Um, we can probably find out. So let's go here. This is admin. Where's the admin section? Is it just? Ooh, it doesn't exist, but yeah, there should be some sort of admin dashboard here somewhere. Uh, and and honestly, you can probably get it by just the uh, brute forcing. Uh, if you if you just brute force, you can find a bunch of stuff. Um, probably a bunch of directories. Uh, let me. I I, I want to show you. Uh, I want to show you guys that just because it's probably like one of my favorite things to do. Uh, brute force into just uh, into just random stuff. You can find all kinds of things because uh, people have created these awesome word lists, and they allow you to pretty much brute force whatever you want. Uh, so let me actually switch over to my terminal. And we'll go into into one of my one of my servers, and I'll show you guys what that looks like. So let me see. All right. So do you guys see my terminal? Um. Yes. yes. Okay. Cool. So it's super boring, but this is probably where I spend most of my time. <laughs> So let's grab this URL and then let's run something called Fuff. So this is uh, this is actually a, a Go application uh, built on the Golang language, and it's a uh, it stands for Fuss Faster, you fool. So let's <laughs> <laughs> let's give it let's give it a few params. So we're gonna tell it what URL we wanted to attack pretty much. And then we're going to tell it what word list we want to attack. Um, so let me see. There it goes. So now we'll go to words. I'll go to custom. And we'll pass a few flags to get rid of all the noise because I don't care about some of the 403s and stuff. Uh, we're going to auto calibrate and we're going to just let it go loose. Uh, so again, this is just going to create a bunch of requests. And uh, if you find something, it's going to come back to us. I don't know if it's going to find anything because I don't think I've ever uh, tried to do this against my own instance of Ushop. Uh Usually, it'll probably maybe die because <laughs> it doesn't have a lot of resources. Um, but if, if it finds anything on that word list that's called custom.txt, which isn't that long, it's just 842. Um, characters is gonna give is gonna tell us, and uh, as we can see, I actually fell here. I feel like I failed because I never checked the robots that text. Uh, it found that there's that there's a robots that text on our website. Uh, so if we go here. Uh, actually, let me just switch over. Um, and that's pretty.
guys, uh, if you guys, have, you guys want to uh, go after a specific. able to uh, to look at all the challenges and, and you know and solve them and yeah and and actually here uh, we we actually found one of the one of the other ones here one out of eight we got four out of eight here Did you already go over the first cross-site scripting challenge? Uh, let me see. Uh, the first one, this one right here. I think um, yours, uh, yours might be different because uh, I think uh, I think the the instance of Juice that you guys are running might be a little newer than this one. But if it's if it's this yeah, one, that's, uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, so this is perform a reflected XSS attack with iframe source javascript alert so let's copy this and let's just put it everywhere and see what pops but we i don't think we got the the point there because uh, we already used that here before so let me go to the dashboard again it might be it, that one might be in the comments or in the contact us uh for yeah it didn't give it to us it's still saying that is re reflected honestly i think that, that this does like this is reflected xss uh because it's reflecting that just right after is like if you hit search you're gonna put it right here and then that's gonna reflect it into the html somewhere here but let's see let's see where else we can we can go let's see we're still in the admin uh actually let's see Let's go back to the main juice shop. Let's actually look at one of these. Let's paste it here. I think I tried this earlier and it didn't work. Edit. Let me try to submit this. Still didn't work. Let's see where else we can write stuff. Let's set a complaint. This was actually this was actually kind of interesting. Uh, yeah. I, if you guys are doing this one, I would suggest putting some like XSS in there as well. Uh, and usually this is this is like a, a, like something that happens a lot when you have you know something like this where you file a complaint and this message right here. This is going to end up on some dashboard. This is going to end up on some administrator's dashboard. And usually those dashboards are built in house and they suck. <laughs> uh, so like if you if you just put like, you know, some XSS payload here, you know, you have a pretty good, you know, chance to score something here. And I don't know if this is going to work, but let's try it. So we'll do we'll do a little bit of a trick here to see if we can get something. So we actually create uh, we'll create it. Not a not an image. I mean, not an, not an anchor. We'll create an image with a source, and we'll actually grab that same thing that we did before. And let me see. Uh, where is this thing? Copy. Let me copy that. And we're gonna give it this. And we're gonna close it. And then we're gonna submit it. I don't know if it's gonna work. Um, but if it does, uh, if it does work, uh, we'll probably get a call on our webhook that site server and you know if that comes with some information I'll, um it'll, it'll trigger a request uh but let's see let's also go look at our basket there's a bunch of stuff right there let's see what happens when we change language 
Okay, so something must have happened. Something must have triggered it. Okay. Let's log out. Now let's log in with our regular account. That was hello at Gmail. Let's go to password. I forgot my fake password already. <laughs> so now let's go here. Let's enter a username. Let's actually enter the iframe they wanted us to pop or just an iframe. Iframe source is equal to JavaScript, and then a colon, and then we'll do alert, no one. This is actually completely 100% valid HTML. Uh, HTML by, you know, by design uh, accepts uh, URLs that start with the word JavaScript. And that actually tells uh, the browser to run the JavaScript after the colon. Uh, so it's, 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 it's old. It comes from like the old times of doing websites. And it has to stay there just for backward compatibility. Uh, so that means that, you know, we can actually uh, run JavaScript directly from this iframe. So I just want to see if, if we can do it. Uh, it might not even let us. Uh, there it goes. So, boom. So we solved something because uh, I'm pretty sure that was that was something. <laughs> uh, but the important thing is that that we got uh, XSS right there, right? Uh, so we were able to set our username, and the username is gonna get um, is gonna get output here somewhere, and is gonna actually render that HTML. And, uh, and if I can, let me see if I can find it. Okay, so yeah. So let me show you guys the Dev Tools. Uh, the Dev Tools is actually gonna show. and see if that triggered anything. And I think that was stored XSS. Uh, so uh, so XSS can be broken down into three categories. Um, XSS can be, uh, so right here, reflected. It can be a DOM XSS, or it can also be a stored XSS. So uh, a reflected XSS just means that um, that this, this, this HTML right here is being rendered in the response. And it usually means that it, it requires some sort of user interaction, like clicking on a malicious link or doing something else to trigger it. Uh, so that's usually the lowest, um, the, the lowest impact XSS that there is. And then there's uh, DOM XSS, which is a little harder to detect because it actually takes this right here and uses it somewhere in the DOM uh, to create the JavaScript that we need. Uh, so it's usually a little more involved of finding it because you have to trace down where is where the application is intaking user generated input and actually using it in the script that you're using in the website. And then the other one, the stored XSS, is pretty much when you're able to save a payload like on your bio or on a comment section and nobody has to do anything. They just have to interact with that page where you save your payload and the payload will trigger. Uh, and they won't, you know, like again, they won't be able to know what happened. Uh, usually these are more quiet than popping an alert. You know, the, the alert is just kind of a way of saying, hey, you know, like I'm able to run JavaScript on your site. Um, but usually again, you know, we can create something like, uh, like an uh, XML HTTP request and just submit that as an Ajax request directly using JavaScript. And that'll be 100% quiet. The only way that you will be able to detect that is if you're watching your networking tab and seeing all the requests coming in and out of the application, which I mean, other than, you know, people like us, I don't think ever, anybody does that. <laughs> Isn't that basically how uh, K 
canary tokens work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So pretty much, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, something similar to canary tokens here would be like X, uh, a CSRF. Um, you know, CSRF is, is a way of performing actions. Uh, you know, that, that are supposed to come from another user. Uh, and CSRF tokens, you know, take care of that by creating like a random nonce, and then every request that doesn't have that nonce gets rejected. Uh, XSS gets pretty much um, remediated by encoding everything that's coming out from um, anything that's coming from a user, uh, from an user input, you know, that, that you can control or like anything literally like from headers to, you know, like uh, I've literally seen XSS pop from so from somebody using the host header and putting in uh, an XSS payload in there. Uh, a lot of, again, a lot of these applications take user sessions and save all their values from headers into a database uh, and then they, they're used for analytics and they're used for all these other things so a xss can exist anywhere that the user has control of a lot of people don't realize that user land and us like we control a lot of the information that gets sent with a server including headers and including you know like a lot of information you know from parameters and stuff they, they don't look like they can be controlled from our end, but again, you know, using burp and using, you know, like uh, some something to like investigate the networking requests that are going on, you can, you know, piece together how that website works and what parameters is taking. And then you can control over, you, you can take control of those parameters and submit, you know, like malicious inputs. Uh, usually like what I go for, instead of using like this payload right here, uh, iframe, again, like my payloads uh, are, are usually, pretty small and pretty insignificant you know like again this is this is usually how to start a payload if if this gets me in uh if, if those one two three four characters can get interpreted by the html renderer i know that i have if anywhere from 80 to 95 percent of getting an xss uh the only thing that can stop me at that point is if they have some sort of csp content secure policy or if they have you know something like dom purify that's gonna you know like completely erase my attempts at going at it carlos can you show a um a sql injection real quick yeah yeah so we actually went through one and let me see okay. i it just didn't it just didn't show there but but yeah there's one in the login yeah so we can uh we can do we can close the initial query we can use the or keyword and then we can evaluate this one equals one and then we can just comment off the rest of the sql query and that's going to evaluate to true uh so it's just going to log you in or with the admin credentials and it doesn't matter what password here like you put like i can literally just you know like do that and then just go log in and it's going to log me in um and again that's that's the sql being uh the sql not escaping input that's coming directly from the client side um the client side always has to get um, their input sanitized on the front end and the back end uh, if you're only sanitizing front end uh, i can still bypass that by using you know curl or something that's going to allow me to send a uh, raw http requests um, but if you're also you know like filtering and doing all this on the back end when the data gets to the server then you're defeating all my attacks um, a lot of the time you know people will use something like um like a waf the the web application firewall and they think that that's going to be you know everything that they're going to need to use to protect their application um, but the wafs are only as good as how you implement them and if you implement them with you know a, a, a blacklist or a whitelist uh, I'm I'll you know you're probably more than 90% to be able to bypass that using you know some sort of weird encoding uh, that HTML will accept cool thanks mm -hmm. I feel like to be a hacker I need to, yeah I need mm -hmm. to know HTML and okay SQL so this was pretty cool uh so if we if we can take control of this these names right here which i think we can by just you know changing the request uh this is going to generate a pdf um a pdf generator is always you know a, a telltale sign that something is going on here and this is being generated on the uh, server side 
Uh, so this tells me that I could probably try to inject some um, HTML here and have it rendered uh, because the way that PDF renderers work is they do all their work from the server side and they interpret everything that gets given to them uh, as first HTML and then PDF. Uh, so they take uh, a, a HTML structure and then convert it into an XML structure and then wrap it up as a PDF. Uh, what you can do here is again called uh, something called SSRF, uh, server side request forgery, and see if you can actually interact with uh, the server while that rendering, pro while the PDF rendering is being done. Uh, because at the moment that the PDF renderer gets to, you know, for example, an image tag, it's gonna try to fetch that image. And if that image tag contains the source that's in our server, it's gonna attempt to hit our server first and then give us a bunch of information about itself. Uh, at that point, you know, what I would do is I would probably, you know, try to use iframes and see if I can inject an iframe and then from there interact with any request that's in their network uh, internally uh, because that's where this PDF is being created. This PDF is being created uh, somewhere in their network and at that point I can access, you know, internal network resources like intranets and stuff like that. Does, does changing the number do anything, that order number? Uh, it, it might. Um, it's probably it probably has to do with the uh, with the inner HTML because if I go here to my basket, okay, I'm probably gonna have to uh, to create a new basket. So if I go to let me see, let's add some of this. Let's add it to my let's add one of those. Let's go to my basket. So this right here, this name is only controlled by HTML. Um, it's not being enforced by anything. Uh, so if I actually go here and change it to Hello from the Dev Tools. You should you see you should see that change, and this is why you can't trust people. <laughs> you know, this is why you can't trust anybody that's messing with your application because now I can do this, and let's see if it works. If we do the checkout, uh, okay. So this one actually kept it. This one actually kept this, but it's saying that the customers, the admin, you shop. We can actually, I think we can control some of this information. So let's actually try to go after that. Because I think that would be pretty cool. Uh, let's go here. I think this doesn't have. So over there. This is usually my favorite payload. I just, you know, I use I, I use stuff like to test these things uh, where I can, you know, find it really fast when I'm looking at the dev tools. Uh, hopefully nothing in the website is called hello there. Uh, sometimes I even put my name or just some ran something random that I can copy and paste and then do a control F and find it and see where in the uh, in the HTML context did it end up. Uh, so, so here, let's set that username. Let's go back to the juice shop and let's do some shopping. Let me see. And remember when we, when we, we did get an, an XSS on that username, so we can actually put XSS in there. So if uh, if we go to the basket and then we do a checkout and we see our username, we, sh we can do something. Uh, so we're still not seeing it. We do get an order number, that's pretty interesting. Uh, but we not we don't see that. And I don't know if they included something like that in, in this specific CTF, but that one will be, that one will be pretty cool. Uh, so let me see. Let me go to this again. Let me, oh, this is block to change, but let's see. I still think that we should be able to do something there. That one look pretty interesting. Nope. And that that's that and this is some other functionality that I just saw. Um but apparently you can request a recycling box and you can probably do something there too. Uh that one would be cool to just mess around with as well. I'm trying to see if we can. Let me see. What what happens if I change it here? 
Now let's add this. Uh, let's go to my basket. Nah, still does it. <laughs> Let's see. Mm, okay, so yeah, so it's not it's not allowing us to change anything. If it did, it would have been pretty cool. Well, let's see what else is here. We're going to go to 20. Let us see more. Just a few other things. Oh, this actually, though. Oh, and this is actually the um, the uh, the book that has all the answers. Uh, so the official companion guide by Bjorn. Uh, he's uh, he's really cool. He's on he's on Twitter as well. So if you if you click this, it's gonna take you to the actual uh, link pub, and it's uh, it says that you you can pay for it, but if uh, if you guys aren't able to, you can slide this all the way to zero and just download it, and that's actually gonna work walk you through all the answers. Uh, if you guys want to keep playing afterwards, uh, and um. Also, I also actually want to show you uh, the uh, the GitHub page because you have some cool information. Let's see. Close. So here it goes. I'm trying to see. Okay, here it goes. So if you um if you set up a Heroku instance uh you just go to heroku.com and sign up for their services you can actually run this for free uh for zero dollars a month and uh and you can just click this deploy to heroku and it's going to deploy it for you uh and it's, you're not going to have to do anything you're not going to have to set up any databases or anything you just deploy it you give it a name and then that's it um and it does everything for you uh, i think that's how i'm pretty sure that's how i set up the one i have and i set it up like two years ago and that thing's still going <laughs> Yeah, I didn't realize they had that. That's a very uh, easy way to to get an instance of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's really cool. And and what's even what's even cooler about it that that I really like is it has this feature where it fixes itself. So obviously, you know, you're gonna throw you know all kinds of weird things at it. And there's times where you can break it. You can break the database. You can break you know anything from the from the back end. And mm -hmm. if you if you actually leave it overnight, it, it'll it'll clean all that and rebuild itself. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Technology. We can rebuild it. Yep. <laughs> um, Corey had a question. He was wondering if he could share his screen and you might be able to help him uh, solve his one issue. Yeah, let me see. Let me stop and then go ahead and share. Now I put Corey on the uh, L O B S. I'm there, right? Dude, I don't think Tim's muted. I don't know if Tim knows that he's muted or not muted. All right. I like to find one thing and beat my head against it until I can't see anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> in, true, in true fashion, I've started with the very first, <laughs> the very first one and I haven't gotten any further with it. All right. So this is the, the Dom XS, uh, XSS. Um, and it went over to search and, you know, threw it in the, in the search and I get the, I get the frame, but, there's nothing else coming up uh, with it. So, so that that XSS should be in quotes. So, if you put, if you wrap that XSS, that's after uh, like in the alert in quotes, or just replace it with a one, is gonna pop. Uh, because that that alert is executing JavaScript, so it's actually looking for a variable called XSS, which it doesn't exist. Uh, but if you give it one, it's just gonna give you the one. Right. So it gives that. But what? So I guess in for the CTF, there should be a flag, right? What's the Where's the flag oh, for that then? So the the flag, I don't know. I don't know how how you guys have it set up, but here you don't get any flags because uh, of my instance, the um, the the juice shop just gives me the flag automatically on the dashboard. Yeah. Um, so we had um, 
it's multi-user and it is set up as CTF, but once somebody gets the flag, oh, it doesn't pop back up. Then never mind. Okay, so that's well, somebody got it. Next time we. You're uh... welcome. <laughs> Go back to challenge. What's challenge say? Yeah, they even gave you the wrong attack because it was that uh, XSS isn't in quotes. Yeah, and it's like it, it acts right, but I guess there's something different that I need to have in the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go back and put that in. Yeah, yeah now go do it. I mean, that just makes this this frame appear. Yeah, it's not it's not gonna pop because it's yeah. gonna look for that for for that XSS as a variable, yeah, not XSS for a string. In there. Yeah, put the the thing in quotes. Oh yeah, yeah, that might be it. Yeah, you might you might just have to uh to to do it how they want you to do it. So yeah, just wrap that XSS around uh, single quotes, and like then that? pop it. Yeah, and then pop it, and then uh, go back to the uh, the CTF uh, dashboard. Well, there's I got to copy and paste a flag in here, right? Yeah, the flag doesn't pop up on. Yeah. On Put G XSS in there. No, it's gonna be a string. Uh, let me see. So when it has a flag, it pops up a green bar and it tells you the flag and Not it gives that. you the copy button. Let me see. Was that dumb? Yeah. Dumb XSS. Dumb 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 dumb. dumb, dumb. Oh, then you maybe not do it in the right place. Uh, that's also a possibility. But Jeff, you were saying if somebody's already solved it, it's not going to pop the the flag up, right? It, I don't believe it does, because I tested that on one earlier. But if you go into Juice Shop and look at at scoreboard, it should tell you if somebody's answered it. But we know we know that uh, yeah. you got punked by uh, by David over there. I was just kidding. That's not me. It's user six. We can track them down. <laughs> <laughs> we will find you. It's not something dumb like flag, is it? Well, what I'm, saying, what I'm saying is you may not, it may just not give you the flag. Okay. Because it's already been solved. Juice shop. Carlos showed us the hidden juice shop scoreboard. Yeah, so so if you if you if you replace that search on the URL, just re, re, uh, remove all that, and then type in uh, score dashboard. Oh yeah. So yeah, see, so you already have all those salts. So it's not gonna pop that back to us. But oh, be. so this CTF is the first one to get it. Gets. Well, although it says that one is not solved. <laughs> oh, but look <laughs> there. See, yeah, it's something that we discovered tonight as we were playing through it. Is that the <clears throat> the, the solves were one one per instance of juice shop. Mm -hmm. So next time we build this, we're gonna need more than one. <laughs> But still, so, but, but the other ones, but the other one, that one still had two though. Because if you go to the look at the yeah, look at the description it. there, it's different. Six minutes ago, yeah, I don't know. See, how it's got XSS okay. in quotes. I, as long as it's not just me, that's just what I wanted to make sure of. Because I, <laughs> like I said, I've been beating my head against the wall on this thing just to make sure. So this is the Dom XSS. Attack. Yeah. yeah. Go back to the juice shop scoreboard. Mm -hmm. The Dom XSS attack is the second one up there. Oh, that's solved. It's been solved. The mm. that's a reflected XSS Reflect is unsolved, and that would be in a different location. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. I am satisfied. 